Finally, it's time. After 10,000 years, Great Nature has support again. So, hi everybody, it's Atlas. Uh, well, after this uh, Zoo Booster came out, in which I case split with uh, Gabe and our friend Robert, uh, I have some deck, deck profiles for you. So, uh, this is Big Belly, and this honorary professor should be... Uh, right behind it. So, for the starter, we have uh, Blackboard Parrot. Now, this is really, really old. Um, Blackboard Parrot, uh, his steel is, uh, you can, he's a forerunner, and then uh, you can put it into your soul, pick a rear guard, and give it the ability that when it's put in your drop zone during your uh, end phase, you draw a card, so I call that life insurance. Um, I used to use Telescope Rabbit because it was an easy way to kill itself, but there are enough cards in here that kill themselves that I don't really need it anymore. And on top of that, starters die fast, and this is an easy way to get it out of the way. On top of that, you care about your soul just a little bit more now, so uh helps you get soul. Um, three copies of uh, Amazing Professor Big Belly. I call him Blue Belly just because there's Blue Asha. And, uh, you know, that new dark face was really blue, so blue belly. Um, so he, he's got, uh, success, 20,000 on van or rear. And then, uh, when you ride him or stride over him, you can call something from your hand, and it gets 4,000, and at the end of the turn, you draw and retire. So, uh, the card does not have to be there at the end of your turn to get the draw. So if you put down, like, uh, a crit, like, you know, a... Pond Belly, and then use Pond Belly still, and you know draw plus five K to Vanguard. Then uh, you still get your draw at the end phase. So it's it's a really good still, and most of all, it's free. Yay! Um, and then his other still is Van or Rear. Once per turn, GB one uh, at the end of the battle that he attacked. If he was successful, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your other rear guards, stand it, and it gets plus four K. So this is basically another Crayon Tiger. <laughs> um, Please note that the still does not kill the thing you're standing, so that's nice, but, you know, something else probably will. And, uh, the important thing is that this is a success unit with the ability to do Crayon Tiger stuff, which means that we now have a way to do our Mana Garm turn, uh, with Resist, which means fuck you, Denial Griffin. So, love him, he's great. Um, one copy of Teacher's Tane of Affection Big Belly, so, uh... Yes, it's SP. I'm a whore. Anyway, um, so the reason I run this one copy is I'm a very unlucky man, and having five copies of something I want to ride is just gives me security, because, yeah. Anyway, so he's got success, 25k on Vandor, which probably never happens, uh, and then also GB2, uh, so all of your successful units get, um, plus 4k continuous, and then the other skill is, uh, if you have no rear guards, all the cards in your hand get grade plus one, so you can strive with the grade two, which is fine, I guess, but doesn't happen often. And then also, when your G unit strides, you can counterblast one and call a uh, unit with with the success ability to rear, give it four can at the end of the turn, and draw and retire. So it's basically like a worse version of that. But again, I'm very unlucky, and uh, I, I just want the right consistency. Also, like... The amount of thi the amount of things out of the SP packs that I've gotten are dwindling. Like I don't use the old big belly anymore. You basically don't use this anymore. The PG has uh, gone, although it's an honorary professor, and all that's left is like stride fodders and the crit. So yeah, M maybe maybe it's just me trying to like hold on to it. Who knows? Uh, three copies of talented rhinos. So his skill is uh, he's got success twenty k. And GB1, if he is successful, he gets plus 4k, and uh, your opponent cannot call grade 0 units from hand to guard circle when he attacks, so uh, if he's successful, he's a Silent Tom, which is awesome, because it, when combined with Mana Garm, who makes your uh, columns attacking for 20k or more read successful, uh, they cannot, your opponent can't guard grade 1 or higher, so if it's with him, that means that they cannot call... Uh, they cannot guard with anything except G guards or intercepts. So, or, you know, stuff from, like, 
you know, the brand blue one that calls someone from drops in a dart. It's just hand a dart circle. The point is, this thing's really, really good, and uh, it's a common, so yay. Um, it's basically like this is your win condition, and it's searchable, which is really, really cool. So, um, four copies of Crayon Tiger because this is great nature, and what are we without Crayon Tiger? Um, I really don't want to say the effect again, but people get all pissy if I don't, so, um, he's a, the Amber Clone. So when he's boosted in Tax Vanguard GB1, you can counterblast one, stand something, gets plus 4k at the end of the turn, draw and retire. So again, because it's like that, it does not need to hit drop zone, you can just draw if the thing isn't there, but it's an out Um The point is, it gives you cards and it gives you another attack and it's just really good and they need to reprint this already. Um, three copies of one of the new cards, Artistic Ocelot. So it looks like Babu from Archer escaped in the Vanguard. Um, so once per turn on Vander Rear, when he attacks, uh, you choose up to one of your other rear guards, gets plus 4k and it dies at the end. And then also, uh, once per turn GB1, you can counterblast one if you have a, a big belly Vanguard. Choose one of your other rear guards, it gets plus 4k and at the end of the turn, draw and retire. So this is Binoculus Tiger combined with just like another dope and life insurance. So... Um, this is useful both early game and late game now, which is very, very nice. Um, it may, like, running Binoculus Tiger before was really clunky late game. This you can, like, all right, screw it. Put it down and dope some, or, you know, counterblast, get a dope on something, and then attack and get another. So, very good. Um, I don't know why they made him triple R. It feels more like a double R, but whatever. Maybe it's, like, because Binoculus was a triple R originally. Okay, three copies of Lesser Rider. So he's got success, 20k, and then if he's successful, all of your units with his success ability get plus 2k and resist. And then also, once per turn act, you can soul blast and make him artificially successful till the end of the turn, and he dies at the end. So, um, an important thing to note is that if you make him artificially successful, it doesn't necessarily make your other unit successful. They have to see something hit, you know, 20k or 25k. Um, hit him, basically he's cheating. <laughs> um, the important thing, though, is that you can combine this with Talented Rhinos and Manadarm to make your two attacking things in the front resisted, which means Denial Griffin can suck a fat one. Um, you know, you'll put this in the back and do it. But, uh, yeah, this thing is, uh, really good against, you know, what would be a terrible matchup. Um, also, you know, just... Uh, he can kill himself off early game without the need for anybody else, so he can, you can just Soul Blast and kill him at the end, which means uh, your grade 1 lineup can do things with this. Same thing with uh, Artistic Ocelot. That was part of his reason for existing. Um, one copy of Field Blast Otter. So uh, after the things I just showed you, you have one to two text slots to play with. So you can up Lesser Rider or Ocelot to four if you like. Um but I, I like Field Glass Otter, A, because you can... So he's got success, and then GB1, when you call him, you can pick another rear guard and give it a dope. And then at the end of the turn, if he's successful, you bounce him. So this allows you to add, add more power to something, and then, you know, like, you can put him behind Vanguard to give a dope to something, and then it'll go back to your hand. So that's good, and then also it allows early game rush, where, you know, you call him, you have Lesser Rider on the other side, you have your artistic Ocelot on Vanguard, and then... You know, you dope Otter with, you know, the duck bill behind it. It hits 20. He's successful. You can attack with him, and then he goes away at the end of the turn. So um, it's just a very flexible card. It, it's uh, good against, you know, Link Joker because he gets out of the way. Um, I feel like this is like a trademark of mine now. But, yeah, text slot. And then on top of that, we have uh, Tapering Beaver, who's finally in English. Took forever. Um, <coughs> so he's got success 20K. And then when uh, he becomes successful, you can Soul Blast one and double his current power, and at the end of the turn, retire the unit. So um, w this requires like very careful maneuvering on when to hit success. So he, if you if something's going to become successful in main phase, wait and then put him down because he doubles his current power the second something becomes successful, which is how success works. Um, typically what you want to do is get him as close to 20 as you can, and his, his booster as close to 20 as you can, and then on attack, he'll become successful, and then double what the boost is. So, like, let's say he's, you know, uh, 
Like, you gave him three dopes, so that makes him 17. And then your booster is an 11k. So when you boost, that's going to be 17 plus 11 is 28. And then he's going to hit success. So 28 doubled is 56. And even after the boost goes away, and if you re-stand him with something, he's still 56, which is hilarious. And on top of that, uh, your one of your strides allows your front row to be on hit draw, which means... Oh yeah, like this thing is really, really funny. Um, the fact that he's a 5k means that obviously you're just going to run one because if you ride it, you're SOL basically, but uh, God, I love this thing. Uh, my Oh yeah, my record is 96, by the way. 96k. Um, okay. Grade ones. Four copies of our new PG, Revision Scientist Deli Belly. So, you know, PG is any unit. And then also GB1 Soul Blast 1 when he's retired from Rear Guard or Guard Circle. If you got a uh, Big Belly Vanguard, you will. Uh, you may pay the cost if you do draw up to one card and counter charge. So uh, you counter blast a fair amount in the deck. Um, we do care a little bit more about Soul now, so uh, a lot of the uh, stuff in here will basically go toward him. Because he's a free PG, basically. So I literally can't think of another reason why you wouldn't run him. And he only works with Big Belly, so. Let's see. Three copies of Stride, of the Stride Fodder, which is also SP because I repeat, I'm a whore. Um, it's a Stride Fodder and it lets you search Big Belly. I don't, I don't know what you want from me. Um, let's see. Two copies of Coiling Duck Bill and three copies of... Mike Saburo, Mike Saburo, Mike the TA, whatever you want to call him. So they both have similar effects, which is when placed during main phase, you uh, pick one of your other rear guards, and until the end of the turn, it gets red text. When it's put in the drop zone during the end phase, you, in Duck Bill's case, draw a card. In Mike's case, you search a grade three. So there are more copies of Mike because you want the uh, consistency of searching uh, A, what you want to ride in the early game, and B, uh, your win condition is Talented Rhinos and either Crayon Tiger or um, Blue Belly on rear guard. So, more important. Um, I had it at four at one point, but it got to this weird thing where I would have, like, seven grade threes in my hand out of a, you know, 14-card hand, and you're like, okay, well, that's not too helpful. So, cut it down one. It worked out pretty well. Um... Once again, in the grade one lineup, you now have another tech slot to play with. So as of right now, it's Animal Clip Lesser. So new guy, he's got success 20k. When he boosts, uh, if you have, you can have him get 4k. And if you do, until the end of the turn, he gets red text. At the end of your turn, retire this unit. If you have a face-up card in your G-Zone, uh, and he was retired while successful, you draw a card and unflip a damage. So again, this is another thing that can kill himself early, but also it uh, replaces himself and can um, unflip a damage. So being able to get out of the way in the back row is kind of nice because uh, usually you have, like, you know, Duck Bills and Mike Saburo just kind of sitting back there taking up space. So th this can um, vacate the premises. All right, Traders. Four copies of Automatism Koala. Kind of reminds me of that uh, that new Pokemon from Sun and Moon, the one that's all, the, with the log that never... That, what does... I can't remember. Anyway, so uh, it's the new effect heal, and I literally cannot think of a reason to not run this as your heal trigger. I dare you. Anyway, so, uh, you know, he's a heal, and then when you uh, use him for a G-Guard, you can bind him and another copy of him, from, or, and another heal trigger from Drop Zone, and either Counter Charge or Soul Charge. So we both use a fair amount of both resources, which means that this is very flexible as a heal trigger. Also, it's a heal trigger, so four of. Um, four copies of Pawn Belly. SP again. So, um, he's the Heart Thumb clone for Big Belly. Um, I don't, I don't think I really need to sing his praises. You know, when Big Belly attacks, show and soul, draw, plus 5k. Allows you to rush early. Um, this is a fun target to call with Big Belly's, you know, on ride still. Because then you can get, like, you know, 8 plus your 7k, so that's 15 against, uh, uh, that can hit numbers on, like, you know, Dangerous Horn or Glow Heater. And then, uh, you know, in Big Belly Attack, shove it in Soul, get a draw, and plus 5k. And then at the end of the turn, you draw again. So, uh, very good tri uh, crit trigger. Also, two copies of uh, Approval Frigate, 
Or just, I, I, I can't get over that, um, what's it called? That, like, sack on his neck. Anyway, so, uh, he, he's a Mardal clone, and he's another crit. Um, all of your triggers, aside from heals, can put themselves into soul, which means that you can, uh, you know, keep your soul running. The amount of cards you draw, like, mitigates the, oh, I had to put a 10 key shield in soul. It, like, it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. Um, so, six crit and six stands. So we have four copies, whoops, of Watering Elephant and two copies of Chemical Skunk. So uh, Chemical Skunk is also a Mardal clone, so yeah. And then Watering Elephant is, he's a unit with uh, success at 20k and then GB1. At the end phase when someone's put in drop, you can put it in soul and then uh, when uh, you can then call that unit back to rear guard circle. So that means that, let's say I have a talented Rhino and I can't search another, um, I can put this down early and, uh, you know, have Rhino do all this stuff. Like, let's say I dropped, like, a mic and a duck bill during that turn. Uh, Rhino dies in end phase, you get your search and draw, and then you can shove this in soul and immediately get it back for next turn. So, very good stand trigger. Um, a lot of your, uh, a lot of, a lot of the, uh, again, a lot of the win condition comes from talented Rhino. So, stand triggers are very good in the deck. Um, I tried draws for a while, but that is just deck out fuel, so that's good. Uh, onto the G-Zone. Two copies of, originally it was Barrow Wool, now it's Omniscient Dragon Bala Earl. Thanks, Singapore. So, uh, he's a stride, and then once per turn you can Soul Blast, choose a face down card from your G-Zone, uh, turn a face up. So, uh, you know, Sea Breeze or a couple other things I'm about to show you later, but, um, so you choose all the units in your front row, and they get red, uh, red text when it hits a Vanguard draw card, so that includes himself. And then uh, they also get 4k for every face-up card in G-Zone, and at the end of the turn, retire those rear guards that you picked. So um, the important thing, to the, and the reason to run two, is that he's a very solid first stride, and he's really funny later in the game, because you go, all right, I have like eight cards face-up in G-Zone, flip, now I got nine, plus 36 to my front row. Good stuff. Um... So what is nice is like let's say you have a crayon tiger that you don't want to lose. So you have your you know thing you called with big belly like a lesser rider. You go okay, uh, ballot earl flip plus four plus four. Then call crayon tiger, and you won't die at end phase. So um, yeah, this thing's really really solid, and it's a gr. And I'm sad they didn't make an sgr of it because uh, I have the sgr of these. <laughs> Um, Omniscient Dragon Afonk. So he's, uh, you know, once per turn you counter blast, flip a card face up in G Zone. Um, you choose any number of rear guards and they get this unit cannot be retired by card effects. And for each rear guard you picked, he gets plus 4k until end of turn. So this is literally basically just for Kagero. Because you go, all right, my whole field can't be retired. Let's do some stuff. On top of that, uh, if it's stuff like, you know, I don't have any water elephants and my hand's kind of garbage and I don't want to lose anything, this is good for that too. Um, I had it at one originally, but Overlord's freaking everywhere, so I had to up it to two. Um, let's see. One copy of Seabreeze, because it's a G deck, that's usually your flip target for Alphonk or uh, Valor Earl. Um, one copy of Kill Timka. So again, this is another flip target, but also he's vaguely useful sometimes. So he's success 25k. And then when he becomes successful, choose up to four cards from your drop zone, put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. And if you put four cards, choose up to one of your rear guards, give it 4k, and at the end of the turn, draw and retire. So uh, I mostly use this like if I have tapering beaver, and I have a lot of triggers in drop zone, because I'm like, all right, beaver double himself, he's a 48, cool. Put on bottom, now he's 52. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good to, like, stave off deck out, kind of, but, you know... Not it's not like dreaming dragon level good uh preventing deck out, but still it's an alright card. And a flip target. Speaking of flip targets, yet another SGR, uh Omniscient Dragon Frenigus. So this is due to Chaos. Um he gets plus four K for each of your rear guards, and then G V three, you counter blast soul blast. Uh when he's put in G zone at the end of the turn, you may pay the cost if you do. Uh choose all of your rear guards, retire them. And for each unit chosen with this effect, draw a card and counter charge soul charge. Why they put the soul charge there, I don't know. I didn't want them to do that. This, like, will deck you out, but, you know, sometimes they, like, put five on your board, and you're like, well, great. 
it appears I'm screwed. So, um, yeah, this is, again, another flip target for Valorol or on, uh, Afong in any other matchup, but Chaos is a pain in the butt. I can deal with Messiah, but screw Chaos. Two copies of Omniscient Strident Manigarm. Our old buddy from GBTO2. So, uh, once per turn, you can counterblast, flip a copy of him face up. Uh, choose two, your radar, two of your rearguards that get 4k, and then red text when it attacks a vanguard at, if they're at 20k or more, your opponent can't guard with grade 1 or higher. So, uh, with a basic 16 column, it's already hitting 20. So, hooray. Um, yeah, this, this thing is your win condition combined with, uh, like I said, talented rhinos and some kind of re-standard, big belly or crayon tighter. Um, yeah, uh, if you see them at 4, you go into this. I have, of the times I've been testing this, I've only not killed them once, and that's because my opponent had all four heals in hand, so he's able to G-guard everything on Talented Rhino. And then, you know, they can they can do whatever they want against the Vanguard attacks, so they'll PG that, and then, you know, they had a G-guard for the Big Belly. Yeah, I even got a stand trigger, but I killed him next turn, but still, kind of sucked. Um, two copies of Sage Saint Professor Big Belly. So, again, SP, because, yeah, blah, I'm done with that. Um, so, once per turn, GV2, you can flip uh, counterblast, flip a copy. Pick a rear guard, it gets plus 4k for everything in G-Zone. And then uh, you can pick a unit, and it gets red text. When it hits a um, hits a vanguard, you choose the same number of rear guards as the... <coughs> sorry. As the uh, number of cards in your G-Zone and stand them. So, uh if you give this to a rear guard, it can't stand itself because that would be broken, and I would, I wish it did that. But um, this is also fun to use with like tapering beaver because go all right, um, all right, use the skill, flip, and you know you got four face up in G zone plus sixteen to tapering beaver is at twenty uh, twenty one soul blast is forty two now. So um, this is a really solid, a solid like mid game stride or late game. Um, he's kind of like a, I got nothing better to do. And sometimes he's a finisher, so he's very useful kind of across the board. Um, one copy of Kundalini, so uh, when you G-guard, you can pick a rear guard, and uh, at the end of the turn, or give it red text at the end of the turn, it retires itself and you unflip, and then if you did that, it gets 5k shield. So this is, uh, you know, like let's say you're playing against Gridora, which is eating your counter blast or whatever, um, you can get a counter blast for next turn. Um, and then also you can get rid of a duck bill or a mic that's just kind of sitting in the back row. So pretty decent. One copy of uh, Shelter Eris Spangled. So when you G guard with her, GB1, you counter blast flip a G guard face up. Um, so when when she hits guard circle, you pick any number of grade three or less guardians and they get red text. When it's retired from guard circle, draw a card. So uh, it's important to note that when you guard with this, you, it has to be the last thing in the guard circle because it picks everything when it gets there. So you can't be like, all right, you know, guard with two stones and, you know, lesser, and then this, and then Mike, because then Mike won't get this still. So just keep that in mind. But um, anyway, so this this allows you to extend your guards. Um, like, let's say, oh, I got five cards in hand. You can kind of throw everything at the wall, and then after you guard with it, you just get all the cards back that you guarded with. So this is a very good G-guard. Um, one copy of Ardillo. Uh, when you G-guard with him, you can retire any number of rear guards. And uh, if the number of open uh, rear guard circles is three or more, he gets plus 10k till end of battle. So this is an easy 30, uh, you know, 36k shield. Um, what does suck is that you can't... Kill circles. I would love for it to just be like, all right, kill lock cards. Yay! Like the it doesn't work like that though. That was before that whole trend started. Oh well. But he's still a very very solid G guard and basically free because most most of the time your field's gonna be empty during that turn. Um, one copy of El Mirage. So I I took him out for a while, and then Gradora hit the scene. So Gradora still says that you can't call things to that column that you picked during the opponent's next turn. What it doesn't say is that you can call that column during her turn. So uh, his skill is Soul Blast 1 when you guard with it. You choose up to two cards from your hand, call them to separate rears, and then choose up to four of your rear guards and they get resist, and uh, if it's hit, it does not retire. So you still get your um, 
what's it called? You can you get like a dismal like effect off of that, which is also useful in and of itself. Um, but the fact that you can go, all right, I'm going to call a column, looks like I got an next turn after all. So uh, this thing's great. Um, didn't used to be, but now Dredor is a thing. So, And lastly, one of the new guys, uh, Immortality Professor Senkalpa. So uh, you counterblast one when he's placed on guard circle. You may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your rear guards, and it and your vanguard get plus 4k until end of battle for each of your open circles. Then if the chosen unit's uh, attack is 20k or greater, draw, draw a card. So this makes strange numbers, and it's kind of fun. Uh, like, usually what's going to happen is, like, you'll have a crayon tiger here or something. You'll have, like, the other circle open and, you know, these two and your booster. So you'll have three open, typically, when you do this. So then you go, all right, uh, that's plus 12 to crayon tiger, plus 12 to vanguard which means that my Vanguard is now at, it's more than a 10k shield. So it's basically three to pass on just a 26k Vanguard. And you're going to draw, so you can replace that heal you just used. Um, yeah, shit's good. Uh, I, like, you know, sometimes if you're low on Counter Blast, you don't go into this, but it's still a very good card, and uh, I still find a lot of uses for it. So, all right, that was the Big Belly deck profile. Uh, please note that, again, there are a lot of text slots, so you can do what you want. Um, I've tried Label Pangolin, where Animal Clip Lesser is. I've tried that panda who's dragging the tire, I forgot his name. But, uh, yeah, lots of stuff you can do. Anyway, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>